Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. It's an honor for me to welcome back uh, Jennifer Libkowitz, who is the publisher of Living Lux Magazine. It's a magazine that launched about three years ago. Um, we uh, have chatted twice before. She had a cover story on Jeannie Becker, and it was really quite an enjoyable uh, conversation that we had. And, uh, and then we also had a conversation about what it was like to uh, launch a magazine. Um, and she launched it just before COVID. And so that was uh, kind of interesting. And today, uh, Jennifer, you're going to be uh, telling me a little bit about the cover story that you've got uh, uh, this fall. And uh, it's a uh, philanthropist that really is quite uh, renowned and, uh, and I think having an impact on philanthropy in the Toronto uh, market. Uh, Joan Kelly Walker is, uh, is the cover of the current edition of Living Lux Magazine. Jennifer, tell us a little bit about um, the background of your magazine uh, to start with, if you could. Great. So uh, first of all, thanks for having me back. Um, I am the publisher of Living Lux Magazine, and it's a Toronto-based publication here in Ontario, where we feature homes, architectural design, and lifestyle within the city of Toronto and the GTA. It's a luxury publication, so um, anybody could see the magazines. We are both print and digital. So if you go to um, our website or you go to issue.com, you can actually download a free digital copy. We're also sold all over retail stores across the province. So if you go to Shoppers Drug Mart or Indigo Whole Foods, Blah Blahs, you'll actually be able to buy a magazine um, at the retail shelves. Excellent. And uh, who is your cover story about this month? So Joan Kelly Walker, who's an amazing woman, also a dear friend of mine, and also our philanthropy editor of our magazine. So it was an honor to have her on the cover. We had been planning this for a very long time, actually probably well over a year and a half, but because of COVID, it was really hard to do uh, photo shoots at that time. So we had to plan around it. And finally, we had the opportunity to um, showcase Joan on the cover and we had a great time. I mean, it was just, it turned out amazing. It was actually our autumn cover and right on the cover line is falling for autumn. And honestly, she looks beautiful. It looks like a fall cover and it was an amazing day that we all had together. How do you choose a cover? A cover picture, a person, a story? How do you choose one? Well, that's hard. Honestly, it's, it's tough because every issue is different. So we have six issues a year. Sometimes we pick an interior designer on the cover. Um, sometimes it's, you know, someone, let's say, in lifestyle or philanthropy, like Joan Kelly Walker or, or Jeannie Becker, who's also our lifestyle editor. But it really depends. Every issue is very different. And we like to have people that are unique and really, you know, have a great story to tell. And I feel like Joan Kelly Walker really was a great representation of giving back and helping other people. And for us, it was just, you know, a unanimous decision as a team. We all love Joan. We all know the story. We know how she gives back to many different causes and, you know, goes to the roots of things. And actually, you know, sometimes, you know, she'll tell me that she'll go to, um, you know, back in the day when things were travel, you know, was opened up, she would actually go to Africa and see things being built and, you know, watch the well being built, see, you know, where the money was going with World Vision. And it was just really, really nice to see how hard she would try and, you know, just to learn about these different charities and making sure that it was the right initiatives to put her name on. So now I get to introduce you to the cover uh, story, the the cover person on uh, the autumn issue of Living Lex Magazine, Joan Kelly Walker. Joan, welcome to our show. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor. Well, it's a pleasure for me to meet you. Um, I read the article and you come off almost like a saint. And, and the interesting <laughs> opening paragraph talks about that, that you've described as having passion, compassion, and a sense of community. Is that fair, do you think? Passion, Well, you, know, you never know what people are gonna write about you or what they're gonna say about you. And, you know, I've probably had my fair share, you know, being one of the Real Housewives of Toronto of, you know, people not being so favorable. But honestly, I just, I just think that's wonderful. And it makes me, it, like, I am very passionate. I am very compassionate. And I do care a lot about people. And at this age and stage in my life, it makes all the sense in the world to me to, uh, you know, to take it seriously. There is a responsibility for us all to look after each other, especially this day and age with COVID, uh, just to do little check-ins with each other make a huge difference like no gesture is too small um so I, I really believe in that and if you have an opportunity to do something that's a little bit bigger then you have a bigger ripple effect so right now i have a, a, a platform and i have a loud voice so i'm using it for the greatest good that i can excellent where do these traits come from do they come from your mom or a mentor or an example where do they come from 
Wow. Well, you know, I think every person alive is uh, the sum of all of their experiences and all of their decisions and whether or not they learn from those decisions. So I think, you know, we're born with a certain situation, but then what we do with it and how we evolve is really up to us as individuals. Um, so I, in my case, I came up, I grew up in a town literally of 200 people. There was like one stop sign on Main Street, one I'm, street I'm, had in the pavement. prairies somewhere, I understand. In the prairies, yes, a little tiny town called Wilcox. But I'm so grateful for that because you really learn to accept people because they are your community. It's not like you're you're going out to find, you know, cooler people somewhere because you're with your group. And so you accept people for who they are and what they are without judgment. And I think that was a really good foundation for me to build on. And I had great parents. I'm very, very fortunate in, in having, um, I only have one sister, but I have a large family of extended cousins and aunts and uncles and everyone was like-minded and, and very focused on family and on church and um, you know just being kind to one another and it, it's it brings things down to a really simple level where you know human interaction is important and I find now a days sometimes it's not especially with the we're all wearing masks nobody's making eye contact like what happened to opening the door for someone or smiling or saying hi or can i reach that for you in a grocery store or, you know just those little tiny acts of kindness um so i i think that's something that i i don't want to lose in our society. And I, I think that makes a lot of difference. You can really brighten someone's day if it's someone that's been very isolated through COVID and they, you know, they do their one trip a week to the grocery store. If you're grumpy to them, I mean, you're just, you're not helping anything at all. Small acts of kindness are, are very, very powerful. So, but to answer your question about mentors, let's, I let's, think, uh, you know- well, We're gonna come back to that just in a minute if we could. Small acts of kindness is a, is a great way to leave this segment. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We're chatting tonight with uh, Joan Kelly Walker, who is the cover story, the cover uh, uh, model on uh, the fall edition of Living Lux Magazine. And we're also speaking with Jennifer Lipkowitz, who is the publisher of Living Lux Magazine. We're gonna take a break and come back more with Joan Kelly Walker and Jennifer Lipkowitz in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio on Saga 960. We're chatting tonight with Jennifer Lipkowitz, who is the publisher of Living Lux Magazine. And she's introduced us to the fall cover model and story, uh, Joan Kelly Walker, who has uh, been described as having passion, compassion, and a sense of community. Um, the article was written by Jeannie Becker, which must have been fun uh, being interviewed by, uh, by her. Um, and you've described sort of this upbringing uh, in a small town in the, in the prairies. But, you know, you've lived a charmed life. Uh, and we'll maybe come back to it. You were, uh, um, you know, on radio, you were on TV, and then you were uh, um, married to a successful executive. Uh, you've lived a good life. How did you stay grounded? in those mm. small town prairie roots through all the ups and downs, but probably yeah. a lot more ups um, that you've enjoyed during your career in life. Well, how do you stay grounded? I mean, how does anybody stay grounded ever? How do you stay grounded? You you have to be like a real person. I think if, if you get too caught up in your own, you know, your own success, then you're, you're defeating the purpose. I think we all have a responsibility to, you know, to check ourselves too. And, and I mean, being grounded is, is just part of that. If you want to be a good friend, you have to be grounded. If you want to be a good parent, you have to be grounded. There's no way you can live, you know, thinking you're something that you're not. Tell us a little bit about Real Housewives of Toronto. That must have been a interesting <laughs> experience. You know what? I'm so grateful I had that experience. I look back on it with the fondest memories. Uh, having said that, there were some moments that were intense because you don't know what is going on outside of you and you can't really communicate outside of the show with, with everybody else. So yeah, it was, it was tense. It was intense, but it was great. And it afforded me a lot of opportunity. Um, I met Jennifer, Jennifer through the show which gave me this wonderful opportunity to be a contributing editor for the philanthropy page for Living Lots Magazine, and that wouldn't have happened otherwise. Um, so I appreciate all of those opportunities that came from this. Um, so you, first of all, you know, you take an experience like that, um, and then you have to 
you have to, um, you know, find the opportunities and then you have to follow through on it. So I've really stayed in my lane and I've, I've stayed to the business that I know, radio, TV, um, you know, the modeling and fashion world. And, and I sort of just let it, you know, see, see what happens and what's presented to me. And I, I've been very fortunate. Was it too intrins- intrusive on your life or was it uh, a true picture of your life or tell us a little bit more about it? Of housewives, yeah, uh, that's a good question. I think yes, it was. It was a true depiction of my life. I, I, you know, I'm very, very fortunate, um, but I'm also a very kind person, and I think that came through. And I went into the show thinking, you know, I'm just going to be myself, and that did come out. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. How did they approach you? Oh my goodness. You know, I have, I have no idea. Everybody in Toronto was saying, Oh, I got a call. I got a call. So I got a call, but I got a call like really, really early in the process. And, and they ask you, who do you think would be good? Who should we talk to? So they, they really blanket the city and talk to a lot of people, but then you do, you know, there's phone interviews and uh, like on camera interviews and other testing and stuff that you do. um, And they don't reveal to you who, all the cast members are kind of, an, an, I didn't even know until we were there at the first scene that we were shooting. And how long did it go on for? Uh, we did one season. We only did one season and it had a big pa- impact on my life and, and certainly of the other cast members as well. Do you stay in touch with some of them? I stay in touch with uh, all but one. And for no reason in particular, we just, you know, went in completely different directions, but everybody else, I, I still cherish as very close friends. So in the end, it was a very positive experience. It was. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Very grateful. Now the article talked about uh, a myriad of showbiz gigs that you uh, were involved in uh, previously. Um, and that you were a model that you were doing infomercials, commercials, voiceovers, traffic, weather, radio, TV hosting, etc. Tell me about that. But like I said, that's a fascinating background. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, growing up in my small town, it was very limited um, at the time of what career choices that you had in front of you. So I had these dreams. I knew I wanted to work in this business. I couldn't even define the business for you, but I, I thought, okay, modeling, I'll start with that. Let's, let's see where that can take me. So uh, I started doing some fashion shows in Regina when I was 14. I did a, a couple of fashion shows for the Bay and that was very exciting. And then when I was 16, I went to Vancouver and I did some modeling in the summer and then I finished high school. And then I moved to Toronto, took classes at university, uh, got a part-time job and, and then just tried to figure it out like how do you start in this business how do you get an agent but I did and one thing led to another and you know from from doing modeling and acting and commercials and infomercials and things like that I was on set enough that I kind of learned and I would pick people's brain on set like how what are you doing what is that clapper loader just asking a lot of questions and so I started working on set really at the bottom of, of like the rungs of the ladder, just as a coffee girl, as a runner, like whatever you need me to do, I'll be the assistant's assistant. And I would just, I just loved it. I just loved it. And I obviously had a passion for it. I didn't mind, you know, you'd be booked for eight hours and you'd be there 16 hours. Like I just was thrilled to be there. So I, I learned and I worked my way up and eventually I I've produced, I've directed, I've, you know, I've, I've really taken advantage of everything. And I think that's true for a lot of people. If you can find your vein and really stay in there and stay true to what you want to do, I think, um, you know, different opportunities will present themselves. A couple of times now you've, you've said, stay in your lane, true to your lane, know what your lane is. What do you mean by that? Oh, wow. Well, you know, I think some people have they listen a lot to what other people's expectations of them are. And that's something I I really tried to not instill in my kids because I want them to just flourish and to just be. So um, just as an example, and this may not be a great example, but I met a fellow yesterday who's gay and he hadn't spoken to his mother for, you know, as soon as he came out. And that's, you know, that's just, but I'm, I'm happy that he did what he needed to do for himself. Um, 
so anyway, that's, that's what I mean. Just, just be honest with yourself. Be authentic, and, be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you, you, we talked about right off the top, but that you were described as being compassionate, passionate and community minded. Is that your passion? Yes, absolutely. And the more that I learn about philanthropy, the more, uh, you know, I've, I've been given these wonderful opportunities and these wonderful experiences in philanthropy that a lot of people may not um, may not take it to that level for it. Like Jennifer mentioned it earlier, um, we've been big supporters of World Vision Canada for a number of years now, but instead of just giving a donation, I actually go to Mozambique or Cambodia or you know, wherever it is to see where is the money going? How are they following through on what they said they were gonna do? So it's my voice to come home and say, Here's what I saw, here's what I learned, here's what I was pleased about. Um, and you know, I do the same thing, whether it's an international charity or a national charity or something local or regional. And I try and focus giving on all of those uh, different areas. I understand that this fall, you're launching something called the Give Back Collective with your mm -hmm. sister-in-law, uh, Ivana yes. Walker, um, who's a Canadian accessories designer. What is the Give Back Collective, if you could tell us? Mm. Well, it's a big, a big hairy deal. This is really exciting. This is, this is like all the worlds colliding. And I'm, I'm so grateful for this. Um, Ivana is a dear friend, my, and she happens to be my sister-in-law and we both respect each other's um, passion for fashion and for giving back. So one day at our cottage, while having a glass of wine on the dock, we came up with this idea. Wouldn't it be great if there was somewhere that you could shop that showcased Canadian fashion and design and designers and their work, but also it's a way of giving back. So when I'm shopping, I go there and I'm looking at all these items and I know that the profits from those items are going to a collection of uh, charities that we already have vetted and I have relationships with and that we support. Um, so as soon as we put some feelers out, we had amazing Canadian designers coming forward and putting their hand up saying, yes, I wanna do that. So we have George Sully, and Leslie Hampton and Dan Duar and Ivana and me and Tere Holmes and um, Stephen Zabado. So these are these are incredibly talented people with with big names and big following. And you know, I think after this experience of COVID, I think people want to be more responsible in how they're spending money. And this is a way to celebrate each other as designers and to come together and really focus our efforts on giving back in a big way to a, a certain group of charities, which includes uh, United Way and specifically the Ben Lefebvre Mental Health Impact Fund, um, the CNIB, the Canadian National Institute of the Blind, um, which I have a soft spot for because my mom is legally blind. Uh, we support World Vision and we support Breakfast Clubs of Canada. How did you get involved in all this? It just came from your sister-in-law or did you develop it or what? Well, all of these relationships we have been forging over a number of years. Um, it takes time to develop these relationships and to get to know the people and to, um, you know, to really make sure that you trust them. And I'm the leading edge of that part of it. So, you know, going overseas with World Vision is has has been wonderful but i also have been to the schools handing out breakfast with the breakfast club of canada and um you know i've, I've toured a lot of the agencies through united way and the cnib i you know i've like really been in the trenches with so um you know it, it does take time and the, you know making that list of charities that we have selected and you know it, it may change we may add a few um you know, I, I would say that probably has been about a 20 year process. You know, you're wealthy, you're successful, you live a good life. Why do you do this? Well, because I love it and because I want to inspire other people to do what they can. And, you know, I'm a huge fan of Princess Diana and her, her famous line was, um, 
when you have privilege, you also have responsibility. And that really resonated with me. And I, I think that's, that's very true. And, you know, there's so many levels, like there's always someone greater or lesser than you, but there's always someone that you can help. Um, so that's what I, I try and live by. When you have privilege, you have responsibility. That's a, it's a good line. Uh, we're going to take a break for some messages, and we're going to come back more with Joan Kelly Walker and Jennifer Lipkowitz of Living Lux Magazine in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. Tonight, we're chatting with Jennifer Lipkowitz, who is the publisher of Living Lux Magazine, and her cover model and cover story, uh, Joan Kelly Walker, who is uh, renowned, um, I think, probably mostly because of uh, your uh, your time on uh, the Housewives, uh, Real Housewives of Toronto. But uh, you've been making a, a real impact, I think, in Toronto um, from a fashion standpoint, from a charitable standpoint, from a philanthropic standpoint. And uh, and I love your line about wanting to uh, to emulate Princess Di and, uh, and really uh, have an impact. Um, Jennifer, maybe I could start with you. Um, you know, it's interesting that you've got Joan Kelly Walker as your philanthropy editor. You've got... Uh, um, uh, Jeannie Becker as your, uh, is it fashion or something like that? Uh, She's our uh, lifestyle editor of the magazine. Lifestyle editor. So she governs life. It's almost like yeah. you have life, like celebrity editors. How, how did you, tell me how this works. Why'd you do that? So, so if, several of them are, are, you know, are, you'd call them celebrity editors, like Jeannie Becker, obviously being an amazing journalist that she is and Joe Kelly Walker, but our editor in chief is Lisa Bandigin and she actually governs the entire magazine and she has an extensive background in uh, magazines and media. Um, we have all, obviously a lot of other contributing editors from, you know, medical doctors to um, finance experts in the magazine that are also contributing editors. But to, you know, to have a magazine like ours, you need a lot of people. So, you know, everyone has their own department. We also have a fashion editor. Her name is Christine Rosvanian. So we all sort of have our roles in the magazine. But I think it all just works really well together when you have really great people and everyone's really strong in their own area in the magazine. How has it been? Have, has the magazine been successful? You've been out for three years now. It's got to be tough. Um, so obviously in the beginning, you know, it was three years ago. So it was prior to COVID. So things were actually pretty good. We were doing a lot of events. Then the lockdown happened. But because we're a home decor and architectural magazine, we've actually done quite well. And, uh, you know, we've been able to print magazines even last year through the pandemic. So we've been doing very well this year. I would say, you know, we're, we're back to full capacity and things are really, really good. We're actually doing an event next year in January, which will be open to 50 readers. So we'll be putting that in the winter issue where the first 50 readers that uh, RSVP through a special email that will be in our winter issue. Oh, I want to come. I want to come. I know you want to be in the first 50 readers, but you know what? I'll invite you anyways, privately, but That's what I um, it's going to be by invite only. And we're really excited to celebrate with everyone and just be together and, uh, and have and have that moment because it's been two years since we were able to do events and now things are are happening. People are double vaccinated and they're able to celebrate together. So I think that's amazing. And I'm really excited for January. We have a big announcement that's going to happen in our winter issue. So as much as I'd love to announce it, it's going to happen in the winter issue where we're, we're launching something pretty big in 2022. You know, I got to tell you, uh, I, I think it was two weeks ago, I went to my first concert. I went to uh, my first hockey game. I'm going to go this weekend to my first basketball game. I went to my first wedding in a year and a half. It's like the world is opening up again. It's kind of uh, interesting. Isn't it amazing? I mean, I was looking at stadiums. I mean, people were going to like, I think it was a basketball game and I was watching it on television and everyone looks so happy and everyone looks like they're having a wonderful time and they're celebrating. And, you know, it's really such a world of a difference right now versus what it was last year when things were really locked down. I think it is a new, new you know, a new normal for sure. But I think a lot of businesses, they've had to pivot themselves. And I think if anything, it's made people more resilient and stronger and you know it's definitely made our business a lot stronger because we really have created new opportunities and we've even pivoted really in a strong way digitally where right now anybody can access our magazine whether they're at an airport or whether they're at a hotel chain so it's really really you know nice to have that opportunity as well well congratulations and thank you for um for sharing some of your successes and some of your your cover stories uh, with uh, with with me and our listeners, uh, Joan Kelly Walker. I got to ask you. You know, you. Um, I understand you've been married for more than two decades. Is that correct? Yes, twenty one years. And you got two children. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I have two been... stepkids, and then two uh, together. So four kids, and uh, and and you um, you've been on TV, reality TV. 
um, you've got a successful career, uh, and uh, and you're now, you know, very involved in the philanthropic community. How do you balance being a wife and you know, you're a your your husband, you know, is a successful was a very successful uh, corporate executive. You know, so you know, not just a wife, but a a wife of a very successful corporate executive, uh, a mom uh, of I presume very active children. Um, your own career and, and then philanthropy. How do you balance all that? Mm, well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? I think if you ask every mother, it, you know, everybody's like, how do you do this? I don't know. I don't think there's any magic answer to that. I think it's fine. It's a fine line. And I just think you have to really pick and choose on what's adding value to your life and what's taking energy from you. So, you know, I, I wish I had a better answer. Somebody, I mean, people write novels and books and, uh, you know, about this exact thing. Um, for me, like what's important to me, I, my health is important. I want to spend my time working out. I want to spend some time in my day, like fueling my brain. What is, what's interesting me, what's challenging me. I want to spend quality time with my family. Um, those are my priorities. So, so the part of where I'm challenging my brain, I think that's the work part of it. And if ever it became too much or too stressful, then I, I would, you know, have to adjust it somehow. But it depends on people's situation. Like, you know, some people, they have to work. So their their priority is their work. And, you know, they have like certainly bigger careers than I do. Um, you know, but now with COVID, like, you know, we can do interviews at seven at night or eight at night. Like our, our days have changed and you can uh, manage your time yourself in a different way that we did a couple of years ago when you had to be at an, in, you know, at work and and like physically there. You said in your article that you were a strong woman because you were raised by a strong woman. Tell me about your mom. Mm -hmm. I have the best mom. I honestly, I have the best parents. My mom has got a massive following on social media. Whenever I post a picture of her, like the comments go crazy and everybody just loves my mom. And you know, the thing about her is she's had a lot of hardships throughout her life. She's grown up. Uh, well, I mean, she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis at a very young age never ever affected her never i mean she wouldn't ever complain about it it certainly affected her physically um but then she had a stroke a while ago and she's now legally blind she can't walk she can't dress herself like there's a lot of limitations Gosh. but if you ask her how are you she'd say i'm great how are you she will never ever complain and i think she does that because she doesn't want to worry me or my sister and she's just sunny and you know, you, she just exudes this mother love. And I think that comes across when people see the pictures of her. It's, it's, it's really quite something. This is someone with multiple sclerosis and is legally blind. And she says she's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, where does this positive attitude come from? Well, what are the alternatives? What's, what's the point? Well, of, lots of people you know, would spend their whole day complaining and uh, talking about their health issues and, uh, and nonstop uh, just, you know, blaming the rest of the world and fate and God and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yep. These are the choices that we make in our own brains daily, hourly, minute by minute. Do you choose to be happy or do you choose something else? Hmm. So, you know, you've lived a fascinating life. Um, thank you. Well, you have like, it's, 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 it's a fascinating life. And the, and the story is a wonderful story. I commend, uh, um, uh, it to all of uh, the people listening tonight, to uh, get, go get, uh, the fall edition of living Lux magazine and read the article. Cause it's really quite an interesting article. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what you've learned from it. Um, so if you had to go back and talk to your, I don't know, 16 year old self, what would you say? Hmm. Oh, wow. I would, I would challenge her to be more structured and to be more uh, assertive for herself instead of, you know, sometimes waiting for things to happen to be more aggressive and saying, here's what I want. And don't be afraid to say, like, if you want to be a movie star, I want to be a movie star, then go for it. 
I think sometimes I was too shy. So for me, I think being more assertive would be very important. Um, and that would be my advice for my kids and for my goddaughters or for any kids at all is just, you know, go for it. And even if, if it changes, like I don't want to be a movie star, then, you know, figure out what the next thing is and then go for that and go for it like entirely, make a plan, stick to the plan, change the plan, but keep it moving forward. You're in control. Really? That's interesting. So you think that a lot of people sort of give up on their dreams, give up on their plans? Well, I think a lot of people kind of just, you know, go in the breeze. Go with the flow. Mm -hmm. That was another thing that uh, came out in the article is that you you dreamt of success and uh, and your future when you were a young child or a teenager, did you not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I don't even know where that came from, but I, you know, I, I could visualize myself doing things like, you know, commercials and uh, hosting TV shows and being on red carpets. And those things happened. Like they may not have happened exactly in the order I wanted them to happen or in the time frame, but, you know, look at me now at this age, my, my kids are growing. I feel like, you know, why not keep it going? And I have to say, I've always been a huge fan of Jeannie Becker and it was such an honor to have her write this article. And, and she's, she's so amazing. It, it was, um, I, it, you know, it just, it came together and it, it really was very grounding for me to have her on board for this. I had the pleasure of interviewing her. Uh, Jennifer was kind enough to, inter, uh, to introduce us as well. And we've actually formed a little bit of a friendship uh, since then. And we've chatted a few times. And she sent me a picture of herself um, as a teacher uh, dancing up on stage uh, and uh, to show me the, <laughs> I uh, that. the original Jeannie Becker. It was kind of, uh, kind of fun. Um, She's a powerhouse and such an inspiration. And she just, she doesn't stop. And I, I really love that. So dream big, um, be more assertive. Uh, some people, you know, you know, we had this, uh, you know, book, uh, Sherry uh, Sandberg, Lean In, and uh, other people have talked about you can't have it all that you got to decide if you want to be sort of a, a wife or a mom or a, a corporate executive. What do you think is, is, can you have it? You know, we, I asked you earlier, can you have it all or how do you manage to have it all? Would you tell people to give up marriage and, and go for the career or no, you can, you can do both? Never, ever, ever. I would never advise. And, you know, the only time you give up a marriage is if it's not good, if it's not healthy or safe, um, you know, or if, you know, you're just not in it anymore. But I, I would say if it's a choice between one or the other, I, I would say, no, you can definitely do both. I understand that you've got a, uh, a radio gig as a relationship coach. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I'm the co-host of a radio show called The Dating and Relationship Show. And uh, my host, Laura Bellotta, is a dear friend, and she's the relationship dating coach. And she has a, a website, and she's a matchmaker. And so I'm the one that's married. And so I have a different perspective. So we have some great conversations, and there's a lot to talk about. What do you talk about? She talks about how you find the, oh the right guy. And what do you talk about? How you keep the right well, guy? Well, how you find the right guy, pheromones, finances in relationships, uh, you know, surviving COVID when you're suddenly locked into a, a small space with people, um, manifesting your soulmate that, you know, it, the list is endless. Manifesting your soulmate. What the heck is that? <laughs> well, you have to listen to our podcast. <laughs> seriously okay you're not gonna tell me how to manifest my soulmate i i could this maybe maybe privately maybe when we're done here okay sounds good <laughs> i'll have to figure out how to manifest my soulmate um so you know you've been uh a model you've been a, a radio host you've been on tv reality uh the real housewives of uh, of toronto a reality show uh you're now very involved in uh, philanthropy What's next? What's the future for Joan Kelly Walker? 
Oh, that's another really good question. Uh, my husband recently retired and, uh, you know, we want to travel, we want to do stuff. It's nice now that I can write for Living Lux magazine wherever I am. I can do a radio show from wherever I am. So, you know, it's all kind of like really in a good place for me to, to do the things that I want to do and continue to do the work that I do. So I think that's probably and you're now the where, where the, I am in the near future anyway. You're the philanthropy we'll what else editor and also for the, uh, Living Lux. What are you going to write about? Yeah. Uh, what am I going to write about next? For philanthropy, for your philanthropy uh, column. What are you going to write about? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, you know, I have to get approved. Like, you know, we have to talk about it before we really commit to it. But, um, you know, it depends what comes across my desk and, and who I meet. Um, you know, whether it's a, a local... Uh, there's a, a thing called Autism Home Base where I met one of the moms who has an adult child with autism. So I, I wrote about her for one of them, just as an example, because, you know, her life story has really been affected by being a parent of an adult child with yeah. autism. So, you know, there's 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 stories out there that may not be heard otherwise. And I think it's really nice that Jennifer has included philanthropy in a home decor magazine because, I just think people like to read the stories. People like to know what's happening in other people's lives. And it really does help. And it makes a difference. Jennifer, if people want to uh, get a copy of your magazine, because they're intrigued by, by this conversation and want to read about Joan Kelly Walker, or just want to read your magazine, how do they get that? So they can go to uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, Indigo, Chapters, um, Whole Foods, Pusateri's, any major uh, retail store across the province of Ontario, carry them for sale. Excellent. And, and they can online? go on our website as well. And what's Online the website? At w, so it's www.livinglux.ca. And they can also check out Living Lux Magazine on issue.com. We're chatting tonight with Jennifer Lipkowitz, who is the publisher of Living Lux Magazine and uh, her cover story, her cover model, uh, Joan Kelly Walker. Uh, fascinating conversation. We're going to take uh, a break for some messages and we're going to come back with some concluding comments in just a minute. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Second and Sixty. It's a real pleasure of mine tonight to uh, to have Jennifer Lipkowitz, who is the publisher of Living Lux Magazine, uh, introduce me to someone who I've always been a little bit fascinated with, and I've followed your career, Joan Kelly Walker. Uh, you uh, you've made a name for yourself uh, in uh, in in Toronto, if not uh, in if not Canada, uh, and uh, and so it's interesting and really a pleasure to meet you. So thank you so much for uh, for joining us. Um, I love the line about passion, compassion, and community. What's the difference between passion and compassion to you? Hmm. Wow. You know, in all the interviews I've done, nobody has ever asked me that before. Let me think about this. I think um, compassion is something that you do. I think passion is something that you are. You are passionate. That's something that comes from from you and and you find your passion whereas compassion if you're compassionate it's because you you're seeing something you're observing something and you want to you want to hold it and help it wonderful i like that I think. um and and then you talk about community being important why is why is community important well i think you know when you look at society i think we are all little microcosms of different types of community and some of them overlap some of them don't overlap some of them are polar opposites um but this is how we live nowadays like there's a community at my kids school there's a community um you know at my gym there's a, a community like everything is a community so in, within those circles i think we all support each other and it's like where they overlap is where uh you extend your circles so i think that's one of the reasons why community is so important. Plus it, um, it kind of levels the playing field. It's a safe place. If you're in your community, even if you're not close friends with people, you know you have commonalities. So I think it, uh, it kind of lends to like a natural way of supporting each other. You know, it's interesting. You talked about Princess Di. I'm not sure if you've been watching this uh, uh, series on CNN on Princess Di that's been um, broadcasting the last couple of weeks. And it's almost as if I think one of her 
failings, lackings was that she didn't have a strong community. She had a community that sort of saved her at one point in time, but uh, she ended up uh, being separated from a community um, when she ended up going uh, into the royal family and, uh, and, and living the life that she led. And so I think you're right. I think community is critically important. It keeps you grounded. It keeps you uh, um, honest. It keeps you real, keeps you authentic, uh, helps you. Um, it's who you want to show that compassion for. Um, and so I think that community is critically important. I think that you've been very beneficial to the Toronto community. And I want to commend you for that. And thank you for that, because uh, I can't tell you how many people have told me that you got to interview Joan Kelly Walker. She's amazing. And so uh, thank you for that. I really appreciate it. And Jennifer, I really appreciate you, uh, you introducing uh, uh, me to Joan Kelly Walker. Joan, if people want to uh, check out this new charity that you've launched, uh, um, remind us the name and uh, how do they do that? It's called the Give Back Collective, and you just go to givebackcollective.com. Thank you so much. Well, that's or our show for tonight. To reach out to me on Instagram, and I'll direct you there. Okay. Joan Kelly Walker on Instagram, Living Lux Magazine, uh, either online or at Shoppers Drug Mart, Indigo, and a whole bunch of other places. Uh, Jennifer, uh, I look forward to you introducing me to another one of your cover guests in the future. Thanks so much uh, for, uh, Thank for doing Thank you very much this. for having us. And that's our show for tonight. You can catch me every Monday through Friday at six o'clock on 960 AM, or you can stream me online at www.saga960m.ca. All my podcasts and video casts are on briancrombie.com and you can get all my videos on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and my podcasts on Audible Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Speakeasy, etc. Thanks very much, ladies, for joining me. That's our show for tonight. Good night, everybody. <laughs>